Hello and welcome to another episode. I was going to do a review on this TV game's Fantastic Four video game by Jack Pacific that I found at the dump. You may have seen that in my latest Brad's Best Dumps video. But um, I put four AA batteries in this little guy and it didn't come on at all. So what I want to do is find out today if it's an issue with battery corrosion, which happens often when you keep batteries in electronics and you have them in storage and you're not using them. Eventually the batteries will degrade and corrode the components inside. Mainly the battery terminals, but it can spread further. So we'll open this up and we'll investigate what kind of damage is in here, whether it's um, a burned out component, if it really is corrosion from batteries being stored in there for an extended period of time, or something else that's going on, maybe a bad switch. But um, let's get into this. Just pop off the battery cover. I put this back on because I just wanted to do the dis disassemble from start to finish here. I already took out my batteries. So I'm just going to look in here to see what I can see. And there is a set of terminals in the back here that appear corroded. I don't know if you can see that in here. Sorry for the poor lighting. But yeah, this corrosion along all these connectors. And that's, that happens with electronics when you leave the batteries in there. So if you're going to put a Game Boy in storage or any device that takes batteries, remove the batteries. Or what you can do if you don't want to remove the batteries, you can always take them out and put, say, a piece of paper on each terminal. Put the batteries in so the piece of paper is blocking the connection from happening. But it's probably just a better idea to just remove the batteries if you're going to store an electronics component for an extended period of time. Take the batteries out. that open so this just popped right up it looks like our controller is just right there yeah so there we go we have um, our buttons there are three buttons our joystick similar to an arcade stick where when you rotate it these pads come up and press onto the buttons. So these are most likely glued in place just lightly. So we're going to make sure not to remove those because if they uh, come off and they're not glued down when you put this back together these will slide out of position and screw up the whole deal. Let's look at this a little further. Okay, so I'm just inspecting the layout now of this. You know, I'm looking underneath and we can see how the wiring configuration is placed in there. So I'm just, you know, doing an inspection. Everything looks pretty good. We have what looks like corrosion around the game key connector. Most likely that is just old flux residue from when it was assembled. So I'm going to remove the screws for this main board here. And we'll, we'll also keep in mind to uh, keep the screws separate and remember where they go. So we have little ones along the top and we have ones with washers.
So again, just being very careful here. Kind of feel the tension of where the wires are. I'm just gonna look on the side. I'm just taking a peek in. As I lift up, I can see what the wires are doing. Looks like I can just flip this over this way. And then I'm gonna inspect the back here. This looks fine. The capacitors look good. Not all capacitors show signs of failure. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, I don't see any corrosion on the main board at all. So most likely the battery is just not getting a good connection there. So I might use my CLR trick. Um, and if you're curious, this is probably the um, system on a chip and this here is probably the ROM information for the actual game. So there are our two main leads for our battery. I'm just going to bring this wire back over and put it back where I got it from. Like that. And I want to make sure this is out of the way properly. I'm going to wrap around back like that. Just making sure the wire is twisted the right way. And then that can just hide down there. So our PCB can sit properly. Like that. So I'll just put the screws back in for now. Start with the big ones, the one on top. Yeah, so the corrosion wasn't terrible, just a little flaky. Um, I, I've seen that before. I did a um, Rob the Robot cleaning. No, it wasn't Rob the Robot, it was my, my big box gyromite where the uh, battery connection connections were extremely corroded. You can uh, find my video on that if you're interested by uh, subscribing or just searching for my videos. Yeah, so right now I'm just going to go and grab a toothbrush and just start brushing off some of that corrosion and getting that out of there. I'll start dry and then I'll go wet with um, a little bit of CLR. Very little. So I have my little work toothbrush here. I just took an old toothbrush that has lived its life in my mouth anyway and I'm instead of just throwing it away you can use these guys for um, these types of jobs like scrubbing things or brushing away debris. So keep your old toothbrush, comes in extremely handy. So I'm just going to come in here. As you can see there's that dry debris in here. It's already moving around. As I scrub it, it's coming out just using it dry here. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some uh, there's some goop there. Yeah, battery corrosion can be nasty. If you're familiar with automotive work at all, you probably know that battery corrosion happens if you don't have any type of protectant on your terminals. And sometimes your car just won't start because there's too much debris there. 
much corrosion buildup and it just doesn't make a solid connection anymore to the battery. Okay, so now that I have the majority of the dry corrosion out of there, it's time for me to use my CLR. What I will do is just pour a little into my cap. Try not to get this stuff on your hands. Normally I work with gloves. I'm just trying to be quick here. I just need a tiny little drop. So what we want to avoid because we're not completely disassembling this, is we don't want the CLR to, you know, seep all the way inside. So we're literally just going to dampen the toothbrush so we can clean the surface. I'm just going to put my toothbrush in there. Let it soak up a little bit. the rest of my CLR back because I don't need much. Now we can just tap the toothbrush like this to um, get that CLR in the bristles a bit. And we'll want to keep some paper towel handy. I do have a little splatter on my desk here I want to clean up. And then we can even do this to get rid of most of it in the toothbrush. Like I said, we want this pretty damp. And then we'll just hit the spots that have the most corrosion, which looks like the positive posts on this side of the terminal connections. So just lightly, we just want it to get the CLR in there. Like I said, we don't want it dripping inside. We're just wetting these. Basically, we're doing the same thing we did when we were doing the dry run, just to get rid of the loose debris. But this time, we're doing it with CLR. And this stuff's pretty nasty, so you don't want to like breathe it in or put it in your eyes. So keep it away from your eyes, especially when you're doing this type of brushing outwards. Because if you get this in your eyes, you're going to be blinded. What I'll do now is I'll let that air out a bit. I will go rinse off my toothbrush and get that clean with just regular old water by running it under the sink. And then uh, when I come back, we'll use some rubbing alcohol just to clean up any leftover CLR and residue that may be left over. So I'm back with my rinsed off toothbrush. I'm just going to take my paper towel here and kind of squeegee out any leftover CLR. We got some out of there, a little bit. And I'll just get the water from rinsing out of my toothbrush. So we're pretty dry. This is my work rubbing alcohol. If you're going to dip stuff into it, you might not want to use it for medical purposes. So I keep this away from the bathroom and it's kept in my tool section of my home. So I have rubbing alcohol on here. It's nice and soaked. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of it. And then I'm just going to go in and do the same thing. Clean up any residual stuff, corrosion, and COR bits that may be left over. And now I'll just let that sit there for a 10 or 20 minutes just so it dries out and we'll just leave it that way and when I get back we will try this out and see if it comes on for us at all. Previously when I would turn on the power switch 
the red light didn't even come on, nothing would happen. So hopefully that fixed it. If not, we will investigate further. Okay, so that should be about dry. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So now I'll show you these terminals a little clearer, hopefully. They definitely look better. They're much shinier and cleaner. And most of that corrosion seems to be gone. So now I'll just pop in the batteries and um, we'll see if this thing will come on for us. My switch is off currently. And for the moment of truth. Sweet! That did not happen last time. So we just had some bad corrosion causing a poor connection to the batteries. So I'm gonna put this thing back together now and we will do a review video next on this Fantastic Four TV games jack specific system. So thanks for watching, I hope you found that informative and you can use that corrosion technique on a ver variety of electronics, whether it's a mp3 player or a handheld game console, anything with batteries that's corroded you can use that cleaning method to um, get rid of your corrosion. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe and check out my other videos if you're interested, and until next time, we will see you later. Thanks for watching.